Joining us here at Post 9, City Chief U.S. Economist Andrew Hollenhorst. Andrew, so I have to ask you, because Nick Timoros pointed this out uh, of the Wall Street Journal on Twitter earlier, X earlier today, saying that most of the street actually isn't expecting a hike in November. So what gives you that confidence? You see more in line with Fed officials. And, and why do you think that seems so um, dissimilar from a lot of your peers? Yeah, I think it really goes back to what we were just talking about, this idea that the economy is proving to be very resilient. And what the Fed needs to do, and I think what they indicated at their meeting they will do, is keep financial conditions tight. The issue that they'll have if they don't hike in November, maybe they could do it in December, November more likely, is they've indicated in their dot plot, in their median dot, that they're going to hike another 25 basis points. If they don't follow through with that hike, then the markets will ask the question, is this Fed really serious about keeping rates higher for longer? And even though it would be inconsistent with their guidance, markets will say, you know what, if they don't hike in November, maybe the next move is going to be a cut. And th that's the risk that they have. So I think that just biases them to doing that final hike. Um, again, it's very much on the margin in terms of does that affect the economy? 25 basis points one way or the other isn't going to be determinative for the economy. It feels like for the past year or two that the market and strategists have been saying to themselves, is it time to fight the Fed now? Is it time not to fight the Fed now? Why do you think there's been such a back and forth with regard to going along with what the Fed has been communicating versus saying, you know what, I have my own data, I'm looking at things, and actually this is the way it's going to be? Yeah, I think a couple of things. One is that the Fed has only slowly adjusted to the idea that inflation was higher, that they would really need to come and fight that inflation with higher interest rates. So as the Fed was adjusting up those expectations, the market was adjusting those expectations along with them, we had this kind of slow and steady rise in interest rates. Then you also have the issue that there's a question about where is the neutral interest rate? How high do interest rates need to get to slow the economy down sufficiently? What we'd seen in the past is, you know, once the Fed raised rates 100 basis points, 200 basis points, 300 basis points, you would have seen that slowing. So there was an expectation that the economy would turn over, the inflation was going to come down, and the Fed would be cutting rates. And so you kept seeing that priced into the market. I think we're finally in a place now where people are seeing the resilience in the economy and seeing that inflation is staying a little bit above 2 percent, um, and that suggests that rates may stay higher for longer. I'm trying to think of what you would have to see roll over to make you change your view. Would it be shelter or energy or claims or real disposable income or something else? Yeah, I think one thing we learned this week is that it's not just about inflation for the Fed here. It's about the real economy, the strength of the real economy, and the tightness of the labor market. So jobless claims, which you mentioned, I think that's a key variable. We saw that fall lower this week, and that's just telling us it's still a very tight labor market. And you're, and you're confident in the, in the quality of that data? Well, you watch, so that, you watch that week to week. You, you know, try to put a moving average through it. Um, if you look at that moving average, it's low also. So you don't think that the Fed can bring down inflation without creating some sort of a recession? That, the soft landing, despite, you know, comments about that, you know, being a wider possibility, you think this is a, a really, really difficult path to tread? Uh, for the country, I would love if I'm wrong on this, but the weight of historical evidence is you need to bring the unemployment rate higher, you need to slow down the economy, have a recession to bring inflation down. I think that's still the most likely case. And in terms of just cuts in the future, if we do get the recession. Um, how far into the future do you see that as being a possibility? Do you really see higher for longer throughout a recession, or do you think immediately they'll start to turn and, you know, do some more easing? So once we see enough weakness in the economy, and I think that's what Powell indicated, if he's confident, if the committee is confident that the economy is slowing and inflation is coming down, then they'll be open to cutting interest rates. So when we see those claims that are moving higher, if we see job creation that's falling to zero or negative, then you can start to think about those cuts. But very importantly, what Powell indicated is he will not mechanically cut rates just because inflation is looking softer. And we've had some softer inflation prints. So I think that's part of what the market is reacting to here mm -hmm. is the idea that you can have a few months of softer core inflation. That's not going to be enough to get the Fed to cut. They're really going to need to see clear, convincing evidence that the economy is slowing.